Hello everyone, I am back. And let me show you what I've done since the last time. So I have the fender here and I had made the cardboard uh, templates and then the uh, poster board and um, made the fiberglass replacement piece by putting aluminum foil or actually foil tape, aluminum tape on top of it, waxing it and then making the replacement part. And then I went to go put it on the, the other fender. Again, I'm making a mirror image of this fender, which is the passenger side fender um, for the driver side. Uh, one of the challenges was there's nothing to reference because of all of the stuff that's missing on this fender when they cut it off. So I uh, created a grid system. And so then I uh, made the part and then I tried to put the part on the other fender and I just couldn't figure out how to line everything up. Uh, so previously I transferred that pattern over to the other fender, but I need a reference, needed a reference front to back and my previous uh, template and pattern and kind of moldish thing I made only covered this section right here. So what I did was I went in and remade all the templates. This time I made them out of foam board and I used sandpaper, or actually sandy blocks, uh, sandy blocks right here, to make sure it was as dead nuts on uh, as I could get it on these templates. So you can see that I have a template, goes right here, and it fits against the edge. Uh, B is next, if I can find it. B's next, and it's right here. And Fits. and C is right here and you can see that it fits and D is finally right here and it fits and I did reference off the top and then I made a mark at the right angle so that when I go to the other one I will have everything at the right angle and the reason I did all this is I was frustrated because it looked like this part was made wrong uh, it looked like it was all well, come to find out, it wasn't. It was just the fact that I couldn't get A, B, C, and D all lined up with only two hands and all that. So I went ahead and uh, made sure all the marks were here in the right orientation. And then I started putting the new piece in place. You can see I created the grid work right there. Um, part of it was I had to cut notches in the bottom here because I wanted to reference the top of the fender and the bottom of the fender. And so to do that, I needed to make a clearance notch. So now you can see that once I screwed it all in place, I screwed through uh, the new fender flare, the new piece I've trapped it in between the two, and uh, then I screwed it in place here. And you can see that that lines up pretty well. It's not perfect yet because of that step right there. I've got to uh, obviously blend these two together, so cut it and then make these at the same level. But this is really close with the exception of that step. If that drops down, there we go. Oh, something's in the way. There we go. So you can see that it fits there. It fits there. It steps up, and so it should theoretically be the same distance all the way through there based on that step that will go away. So there's D and I have again the angle right there so if I put it like that you can see. Uh, C is the one I was worried about because it didn't seem to match but what happened was uh, it's a curve on top of a curve and so they were fighting with each other. Once I screwed them together and cut, uh, had to cut away some stuff in the back because it was pushing it forward. Uh, once I did that, then C comes right in here. And again, it lines up except for where it steps up right here uh, where the two pieces meet. But if you push this back, you can see that that comes awfully close uh, to matching. All right, and then B right here same thing. Again, I had to notch it. Uh, and again, I purposely made it too long because I knew I could cut it. I could do exactly what I did and cut a notch. Uh, B is a little bit off, but that's because it's the way it's sitting on the picnic table. If I push this bottom in a little bit, then it's 
it's not resting on a pretty big table, so it's hard for me to do and video at the same time. But uh, if I push the bottom of it in like it should be, uh, that aligns. And then A is off. But the reason why A is off is because this bottom section is supposed here. This bottom section is supposed to be in quite a bit. If you look right here, this should go in actually several inches. I'm trying to hold it with my elbow while I'm fitting, but this thing should go in like that. And if you look at this, you can see that here, it kicks out right here. It shouldn't kick out. This should actually be there. I can bend it this way. This thing should be bent in. And if you look at this one, you can see that's where the, uh, side of the grill is. Now the reason I don't have to worry about that is because that is also this area right here which is part of the nose piece. So this actually goes up in here. I'll put it on the outside just so you can see. But this actually goes up in here. So, that's a duplicate section. It exists both on the uh, front nose and on this. They overlap significantly. Um, I did that because if you look at the actual fender, let me see if I have it over here. Yeah. All right, so on the actual Grand Sport, there's only this much distance between the front of the vehicle and the front of the fender. If you go look at what I'm doing here, there's a lot of distance in between the front of the uh, fender, front of the fender and the front of the wheel well. So this area I had to create to fill in that gap. So when I made this, I made sure I made this overlap so that it would fill in that gap. So once I put this in place, screw it in place, you can see I previously had it screwed in place, but it was just too hard to maneuver both of these at the same time while I was trying to get that to fit in place. So I took them apart. I wish I would have made a little more on this piece uh, so there was more overlap, but I didn't think I would need it. Um, I was wrong. So this will go in place once I get this in place and put the screws into it. Um, this will it'll pull this in line like it's supposed to be um, i don't want to destroy this thing because my intention is to make a wall ornament uh, by combining this with the top piece and some headlights and grill and turn signals and then make this as a, a wall ornament for a man cave or a garage or a shop or whatever so i'm going to make the first one of those um, out of this so anyway, there we are. I'm ready to go to the next stage. It was going to be, it was unbelievably hot yesterday. The actual temperature was like 105, I think. And with the heat index, it was like 115 or, uh, yeah, that's what it was. I looked it up, it was 115. So it was miserable. I mean, you walk out and I sweat when it's hot. So as soon as I walked out, I started sweating. Uh, I ran errands and went and got a bunch of uh, molds from my fiberglass guy. Um, and it was just hot just loading those up. So uh, luckily I got a break today because it rained, which normally is not good because it's hard to work in the rain. But what it did was it was overcast all morning, so it was a little bit cooler. Then the rain came, I had to go in, but while I was in, I was making all of these new uh, templates out of foam board instead of cardboard. And this was relatively easy to do because I already had them in cardboard. I did destroy that matrix that I made all that with just so that I could save a lot of time by tracing uh, these templates. I thought I was going to have to make the templates front to rear, but by the time I got this in place and put those in, I said, oh, this is it. I don't have to mess with that. If it was out as much as I thought it was going to be, I would go back and remake the front to rear templates off of these lines, these uh, horizontal lines. But again, I didn't have to, which I'm glad of. It saved me a lot of time. While I'm at it, let me show you what I got from my fiberglass guy. Sorry, got to walk around. And I haven't even unloaded it. I came in late last night uh, from the fiberglass shop. 
and then like I said it rained and I've been working on this so a bit of a hike So what this is I got from Fiberglass Sky is the back section of the actual C2 uh, Grand Sport replica. Here's the mold right here. There's the uh, fender vents, rear fender vents. Uh, there's the trunk opening. Uh, so this is the mold and then this is the part that he made. And then this up here is the original that he made the mold off of. Uh, the original parts are really lightweight because of course the those of you familiar with the Grand Sport know that uh, it was a race car and so you can see that this isn't a very thick panel but that's the way they want it so uh, you can see where the mold is significantly thicker and then his parts are, are thicker also but uh, I want these more for uh, to keep around so the fact that they're a little bit thicker and a little bit heavier is actually good but anyway, I threw some foam on top of here and tied everything down and uh, it all held. I was almost worried. It was dark when I was driving, so I was staring in the mirror trying to make sure nothing moved, but I didn't even see a wiggle. So apparently the air went over the top of the truck and over the top of the parts, which I was definitely pleased about. All right, so go ahead, like, subscribe, uh, hit the alert. And if you don't like what I'm doing, you don't know Jack. Bye.